Uh, we're going to talk about Elizabeth Warren. Um, not particularly my favorite candidate. <clears throat> um, I've had a, I've had my my issues with with old Liz, and, and you can check out the backlog of videos that I've made about uh, particularly why uh, I'm not a huge uh, fan of Elizabeth Warren. The Bernie incident, uh, where where you know she's, she's kind of lying about Bernie and the meeting and um, and. Uh, I'll, I will take corporate money in the general election and uh, some of her funders and some of the strange things she said about uh, like war and she's flip flopped on Medicare for all and you know so um, there, there's a couple stories about her that I wanted to touch on um, and particularly uh, the one that came out in the Rolling Stone a little while ago about six women of color that essentially came out and complained about discrimination and being silenced within within her uh, within her campaign ranks, and uh, one of them, Megan Lewis, uh, she said that she felt tokenized and was routinely silenced, and uh, received a lot of progressive buzzwords when she uh, when she kind of addressed that sort of stuff. So, um, and that's very disappointing to hear in that sort of stuff, right? Like, so, uh, you just, you just kind of had these black women on your, uh, you know, on your staff to, and it's not, it's not Elizabeth Warren directly, right? Like, she's not at every one of these campaign headquarters in each state or in each city or in each county or whatever, um, hiring specific people to be like, okay, you're the token black person that that's kind of held by whoever is um, in charge of the campaign HQ in each of these little each of these little locations, uh, which means that in these specific locations, somebody's like, "Here's what we need: we need this many black people." So it makes Elizabeth look like she likes black people. Does she like black people? It's a question mark. But we're gonna make it look like she does by filling a quota that makes it look like she does by quantifying it. And it's this weird fucking shitty way of playing identity politics uh, that, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't particularly care for identity politics a whole lot. Uh, but uh, Warren did apologize. She she came out and, and apologized, uh, which uh, was, uh, which is cool. But yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not complaining about her apologizing or anything. Uh, but she, I mean, she used the whole believe all women, uh, thing, like, uh, I believe all women, I believe these women unequivocally that this is happening within, within, you know, the, the, the staffing of my campaign, and, um, and it's just like, you could just come out and say, like, that you're in support of these women. Uh, the next step, though, is, is what do you do, right? Like, do you go to, to this campaign headquarters, which, um, clearly has uh, several issues uh, that, that has been that, you know you are now privy to and are you gonna fucking fire them like are you gonna fire the people that are kind of silencing these women um, and you know doing doing more to kind of show solidarity um, because their campaign apparently also had a the, the Nevada office specifically is the one that they're talking about uh, had had problems with hiring Latino and Latina uh, organizers and uh, fluent Spanish-speaking organizers to, to help, you know, Spanish-speaking people um, vote and, and participate in democracy. Um, so, you know, that's, that's part of it, it too, is uh, my complaint has always been, uh, you know, Indian people are around too, and, and you know you got Muslim people around too. I think you should hire one or two people based on the demographic of your area uh, that is fluent in specific languages. Like if you have, if your district or your county or whatever it is has like a bunch of Pakistani people, and you know some of them are older and stuff, um, then you should hire somebody that speaks uh, speaks Urdu. And, you, and and that way, if somebody comes to the polls and they're 
like, oh, I don't understand what to do, and they don't particularly understand English very well, you have somebody there to, to in, speak to them. And so, I mean, but that seems to be like an oversight in just the general nature of democracy uh, is is that there aren't this there aren't a lot of multilingual opportunities in the in any campaign in any sort of uh, thing there. So um, yeah, yeah. So uh, she apologized, uh, you know, and. The article pointed out, like, the Sanders campaign has had some backlash as well in dealing with women, like their male uh, staffers that weren't treating women properly, there were uh, wage gap issues, and uh, Sanders addressed it um, and, uh, and, and, and kind of corrected what was going on within, his, within, within the ranks there. And uh, Mayor Pete pro- has also had problems with uh, Latino Latina representation. Uh, for, for I mean, obviously for more reasons than one. I, I don't think he's and he's a candidate that's very friendly to any sort of minority group. Uh, so that's that's that. But um, look, this is a staff issue, uh, and the heads of these campaigns can't be at every single one of these little campaign headquarters. They do have a campaign. Room. Um, and making a statement like what Sanders and Warren did is is pretty fucking good, and and maybe coming up with a plan, a strategy of, of uh, hey, you know, uh, let's figure out how we can make this a uh, safe environment for everybody, a, a fair environment for everybody, um, and, and then go from there. But I, I don't know. I don't. I I always like never really particularly come out. Like, I, I feel like this is sort of the same way that the Bernie Bros are used against Bernie, which are, like, a small minority of very loud people on fucking Twitter. And then they're like, yep, that's the whole thing. That's the whole fucking thing. Whereas, like, I think in this case, like, there's six women that complained because they had every fucking reason to complain. But I don't think this is fully representative of the Warren camp. Um... You know, so, but it is, it is, it is perturbing, right? Because you have these, you know, candidates that call themselves progressive and, uh, and then you have people that are staff doing bullshit like this, uh, just like who is in your fucking camp? Like there, obviously, there doesn't seem like you have a lot of progressive people, like progressive ground floor people. Um, like they don't seem to be progressive on the ground floor or maybe maybe well with Elizabeth Warren too it's just like I don't know if she's I would consider her to be a true progressive like through and through like I don't I don't think I consider her to be that I think she's sort of I think she's sort of a centrist that plays the progressive role uh, under centrism so uh, yeah, but the one thing I think we can take out of this, though, is, like, this whole harassment of women and not paying them properly and kind of um, kind of giving them some buzzwords and telling them to move on is a very, like, corporate mentality. Like, it has a very corporate mentality to it. And we're seeing that people aren't putting up with that shit anymore. That, you know, oh, Megan, you know, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Uh, here's a bunch of isms we're going to throw at you, and then we're not going to do anything about this problem. It's, it's a very corporate way to deal with it. Thank you for bringing this out to, to the attention of the HR department. Um, you know, uh, here's, here's how we feel like we want your voice to be heard uh, and then not do anything about it. And, you know, you still have... XYZ douchebag doing XYZ douchebag things. Um, the public statements are good. I, I'm, I'm all for making a public statement to say, hey, if you work for my campaign, if you work um, for, for our cause and our uh, beliefs and all that, don't be a fucking dick. 
but I think there probably needs to be some action taken uh, in order to kind of rectify the problem. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really see them uh, coming out and making any sort of statements uh, on uh, training programs, on uh, uh, policy within, you know, cha changing kind of the policy within these campaign HQs, um, and, and kind of saying, like, this is how we're going to go ahead and do things, this is how we're going to move forward with this stuff. Uh, it's just kind of just saying a bunch of shit uh, and kind of letting the shitty people on the ground for it be kind of shitty, but that doesn't really help the campaigns, in my opinion. Um, you know, uh, but I also understand, like, that, that, I don't know if that's particularly the candidate's responsibility. I think somebody within the campaign can take that responsibility um, to create sort of like a template of how to operate, like an SOP of how to operate. And maybe some of them already do, and the people that are uh, like the ones in Nevada are just not fucking lining up to it. So, which means that there needs to be, there needs to be a system of accountability in place. Uh, that if you if you are going to uh, uh, harass uh, women and minorities and silence them um, and use them as tokens, then you know you're you're about to lose your fucking job, uh, and you're not going to be part of the campaign, uh, and, uh, and and so on and so forth. You, you know, it, 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 it again kind of seems like on even on a ground floor, it's a strange assertion of power. It's this power dynamic that these people have. Uh, and, and, it, and it's these, this, this, like, weird hierarchies, the hierarchy game that people are playing that doesn't... It, I, I, I never... I don't like, I don't like hierarchy games. They, they, never, they never sit right with me. So, um, but, but the candidates themselves, I, I feel like this is as much as they can do in putting somebody in, in, uh, in charge that... Uh, can kind of oversee. Like, I don't think it's the candidate's responsibility to oversee, um, you know, the small branches uh, of their campaign, right? Like, the, the campaign HQ in particular states, cities, or counties, or whatever. Like, those are those are small, those, those are what I mean as small branches. Like, I don't think folks looking at the oversight of that is particularly the can uh, the, the candidate's responsibility but you can make a statement to say that we're gonna add a accountability and oversight person um, you know like like their own kind of HR department that that actually works uh, we're gonna we're gonna put someone like that in place because that's probably what what they need right now uh, in, in, in these offices so so yeah I think that's that's, that's kind of where I stand on it. Hey, thank you for tuning into that uh, uh, that video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please hit that like button. Please subscribe and, uh, you know, make sure you're uh, getting updates on when I release videos. I release videos every single week. Uh, I have uh, multiple different types of podcasts. Uh, the video you just watched is called Road Reflections. Uh, it's a kind of looser... Uh, video series that I do where I talk about current events and uh, and some individual news stories and ideas and topics that I don't think get discussed in the mainstream. Uh, if you want a more written, concise, uh, focused version of it, uh, I, I do a, a video series called Fork Full of Noodles, uh, where I talk about big ideas in, uh, in, in longer formats, uh, and usually that involves multiple parts. Um, then I have an interview podcast called Taboo Table Talk, where I talk to comedians, musicians, activists, journalists, uh, politicians, anybody of interest, uh, any conversation that you, they're, you're not going to hear on the mainstream. You're not going to see them on, on uh, any of the corporate news outlets. They are, they are talking about the real deep shit. Uh, and part of that is also The Dispatch, which is another current events, uh, like more timely current events. Uh, thing. So that's what happens on this channel. So if you enjoyed that, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like the page, make sure you get in the notifications for all these, uh, all of the content that I put out. 
but if you enjoy any of the content that I put out, if you enjoy the videos that I'm, I'm putting up, the, the subject matter that we're talking about, there's a very good chance that you'll enjoy my live stand-up comedy, and I'm currently on tour. I am touring through the Deep South and the Midwest. Uh, so if you are in Denton, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Dallas, Texas, Austin, Texas, Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri. I am coming to your cities in uh, the next two weeks. So go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Grab your tickets, RSVP to the shows. Come on out, come hang out with me. It's, uh, it's always a really fun time. Uh, to, to meet people that want to get weird and esoteric and talk about the deeper uh, deeper issues, deeper ideas. Uh, always fun to do that. And uh, while you're on my website, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums. And you can become a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha to uh, help support uh, and be a people sponsor of all of the content that I put out on a regular basis and to increase the quality and quantity of all of the uh, the videos and podcasts that I put out, uh, but uh, if you can't, that's okay. All of my stuff is constantly available for free. Anyway, uh, uh, by donating, it would just be an additional token of appreciation to kind of show solidarity and support. Uh, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for uh, for for supporting my work, my endeavors, and my projects. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on, on the next one. See you on the road, guys. Take it easy.